Good morning. Um, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here in Paris, especially during uh, what I thought might be my last week as a European. Um, so I'm here today to talk to you about a project of mine um, about writing assembly in a safer and easier way with Go. Let's begin with what is assembly language. Um, Go provides the ability to provide an implementation of a function in assembly. It's a general term for a low-level language which gives you the ability to program a particular architecture at an instruction-by-instruction -instruction level. So when I think of um, how modern software and hardware works, uh, I end up thinking of this uh, expression, it's turtles all the way down. Um, this idea that the world is actually supported by a stack of turtles. And if you're at the assembly level, you're probably somewhere near the bottom of this stack. <laughs> so just because you can write Go functions in assembly, should you? Let's just start with no. Um, channel your inner Rob Pike and think of some Go proverbs that he didn't say, but he might have. Uh, first off, assembly is not Go. It's not cross-platform. If you want something to run fast, you're going to have to provide implementations across loads of architectures. It's going to be a maintenance headache. Not just that, but with assembly, there are no guarantees. All of the safety that you get with writing pure Go simply isn't there. At the instruction by instruction level, if you want to index off the end of an array, no one's going to stop you. And channel your inner Donald Knuth. And remember the famous quote, premature optimization is the root of all evil. Make sure that you've benchmarked it. Make sure you've profiled it. Make sure this is a bottleneck in your, in your application. But part of this quote that is often left out is, yet we shouldn't pass up our opportunities in that critical 3%. There are cases where assembly is justified for performance reasons. It could be missed optimizations by the compiler. That is increasingly rare. But often it's because of special hardware instructions that you can only get um, by writing the assembly directly yourself. And common use cases are math compute kernels, uh, low-level OS interaction through system calls. Uh, the, the runtime uses assembly extensively. And cryptography is an example we're going to focus a lot on in the rest of this talk. So I'm not here to say don't write assembly. I'm here to say if you're going to, do it safely. So let's just begin with what GoAssembly looks like. Uh, we'll do a hello world, and our hello world will just be adding two 64-bit integers. Um, I think everyone in this room would know how to do that. It looks something like this. And if you want to provide it in assembly instead, you still have to provide a function stub, which looks very much the same, but the function body is missing. And then the build system will know to look for an assembly file. And the implementation is pretty short. It will look something, something like this. We start with a declaration that declares the name of the function, some flags that we won't really focus on, and then some numbers which tell, the, tell Go how much stack space your function needs. So this means that it means zero extra storage on the stack, and the arguments and return values take up 24 bytes. We begin with some move instructions that are going to read the arguments as they're provided to us by Go on the stack frame. So x and y are going to be read at offsets 0 and 8 from the uh, frame pointer. And we're going to read them into registers ax and cx. Then we're going to add cx into ax. And we finish by moving, the return, uh, moving ax into the return value position, also on the stack frame. So at this point, you might be thinking, looks fine. What's the problem? I'll write all my functions in assembly. But I want to explain what I think the problem is. And this, this number is very telling. This is the total number of x86 assembly lines in the standard library. Um, and if we were to include other architectures, this would be much larger. And if we break this down by package, we see that many of the lines are in crypto. And this is an awkward place where we need very high performance. But we also need absolute correctness. If we break this down even further by lines, again, all of the top players are a crypto. And some of the like, biggest files are clocking in at around 2,500 lines. So let's drill in even further. There's no expectation that you understand the code on this slide. Um, let me just say that if I see the word spaghetti loop in a comment, I don't, 
I'm not reassured. Uh, anyway, these are snippets from the same file. Um, this is what I describe as write once code. And this, this snippet is right at line two and, a, two and a half thousand. And you might ask, is this fine? I'm not here to stoke like mass hysteria, but because it probably is fine. Actually, the crypto packages in Go are written by like the world's experts in cryptography and performance. Like this maybe is fine, but we should know for sure that it's fine. And this is another snippet from an old version of the standard library. Um, it has a bug in it. I don't expect you to be able to see it from there. <laughs> um, but two years ago, one of those, well, some of those instructions contain a carry bug. This was noticed by Cloudflare because they're operating at such a scale that they see one in two billion events. The fix is very small, so six lines in a two and a half thousand line file. And actually, a month after it was found, it was revealed to be a critical security vulnerability. So I'm going to say maybe this isn't fine. And actually, the Go community has since recognized that this is a problem and instituted an assembly policy that governs what assembly will be allowed into the standard library. So we should always prefer Go, not assembly. We should minimize the use of assembly. So if we're going to use it, it must bring massive performance benefits. We should explain the root causes. Why do we need this? The testing requirements should be that much higher. And what I want to focus on for the rest of the talk is that this assembly should be easy to review. And if we drill in on this recommendation, make your assembly easy to review. Ideally, auto-generate it with a simple Go program. And that's what we're going to focus on for the rest of the talk. Code generation is actually a, a technique that's used in many other languages and ecosystems to solve this kind of complexity. And I'm going to make this somewhat obvious statement that there's a reason people use compilers. Uh, compilers provide us with uh, register allocators, instruction scheduling. They give us loops and conditionals. They give us functions that we can use to structure our code in sensible ways. And just because we need to use assembly doesn't mean we want to throw away all of these benefits. People who've written high performance C might be familiar with something like this. A load of MMs and underscores. This means you're using so-called intrinsics where each one of these functions will compile to a single um, processor instruction. But we still get to use the benefits of the compiler. Now, this has been discussed in Go, um, and it doesn't look like intrinsics are going to be a, a thing in widespread use. But there's also this concept of a high-level assembler, which is an assembly language plus high-level language features. Uh, we already have Microsoft Macro Assembler, NetWide Assembler, which provide loops, conditionals, variables, in order to like, bring some sanity to some of these large assembly implementations. OpenSSL, actually, is another case which has, uh, obviously, has a lot of assembly crypto. And they solve this problem with Perl, of all things. So they have Perl programs generating assembly programs. And I can't really think of any more shocking combination of languages. <laughs> But there is an approach that has gained um, some popularity. Uh, it's an assembler written in Python called PeachPy. And it even has support for GoAssembly. So you might see it in some hash function implementations. But what about, what about Go? I don't know about you, but I really don't like using Python in my Go projects. So I set about to create a solution for this problem um, for the Go community and created Avo. I even have a, a logo, so it's, it's legit. <laughs> um, so Peach Pie actually was written in uh, Georgia Tech, and I wrote Avo in California, so peaches are to Georgia as avocados are to California. And so the goal is to expose an interface in Go that looks very much like an assembly file would. But if you're using Avo, you are writing a Go program. So you can use Go control structures for assembly generation. You can use functions, you can use loops, you can use if statements. 
Not just that, but another major feature of Avo is to provide a register allocator. So instead of using physical registers, Avo provides this concept of a virtual register. So you can write your, your assembly with virtual registers, and then at cogeneration time, Avo will analyze all of your instructions, and it will allocate the registers for you. So this is one of these things that a manual register allocation can actually make a large assembly implementations very inflexible. But because Avo does it for you, um, that reduces a lot of complexity. And then in, in the Hello World example earlier, we saw how we had to load arguments from very specific memory offsets. We had to compute the size of the stack that the function required. And also, we had to write the return value to a specific offset. Avo will handle all of this for you. So it's another small benefit that will make your assembly implementation more flexible. And finally, this is a, a small thing, but it would also generate the stub files for you to, inter to allow you to interface with, your, with the rest of your Go package. So let's return to the Hello World and see what it would look like using Avo. So for one, it is just a Go program. Your assembly is, is generated in this func main. Um, but we import the Avo build package and use the sort of lesser seen dot import which will include all of Avo's symbols in our own namespace. And that helps to, that helps to give a, an interface that looks very much like an assembly file would. We begin with a text section to declare the function. But now we get to use a Go function signature to declare what arguments and return values that our function is going to take. Now, instead of writing move instructions manually, we can use this load function. And we can reference parameters from the function signature that we provided earlier. Also, this GP64, this is allocating a virtual general purpose register to hold those arguments. Then we call the add Q function, and this issues an add instruction on those virtual registers. Note that Avo actually contains one function for every single x86 instruction there is. And finally, instead of writing a move instruction on our own, again, we use store to write the value to the first return value return position. And finally, every Avo program ends with a call to generate. All of the previous calls have been building up an internal representation of the assembly program. Generate, we will actually perform liveness analysis. It will allocate registers and write the final result. And because it's a Go program, we actually produce the result just by Go running it, telling it where to put the assembly and the stubs. And the result looks very similar to what we had before. But note that this time, it computed the stack sizes for us. Note that it also computed the offsets into the, into the stack frame for us. And it allocated registers for us. We didn't have to choose to put those values in AX and CX. And also, it generated us a stub file so that we can call our add function from the rest of our Go package. And just to drive this point home, we can adjust this to change it so that we just add x to itself five times, say. It's very simple, but we can just put it in a loop and generate four add q instructions. Look, there's four of them. <laughs> so just to really demonstrate what I see as the benefit of this package, I'd like to show you what an implementation of SHA-1 looks like. SHA-1 is a, a very well-known cryptographic hash function, and it has a lot of structure to it. Uh, it has 80 rounds. And within those 80 rounds, the constants and bitwise functions that are used vary. Every round updates the message according to some rule and updates the state according to some rule. This involves a lot of adding and bitwise operations. Now, the standard library includes a completely unrolled implementation. And Avo can be used to do this in a sane way. So here's one of the subroutines that is used in SHA-1. It's known as a majority vote. And we can implement this in Avo with just a Go function that takes three virtual registers and returns another one that will contain the majority vote after executing those instructions. Likewise, another bitwise function that's used in SHA-1 is, is XOR. And we can write this as a subroutine in our Avo code generator. And 
also we can make use of arrays of registers, because again, this is just a Go program. We can loop over them to do things like loading the initial hash value and initializing the state registers, for example. Then when it comes to executing the round functions, we can just make use of a Go loop. We loop over it uh, once for all the 80 rounds. And these instructions here will actually perform the state update on the registers that we're maintaining. So what I like about this is that actually when you're looking at the full AVO code generator, you're looking at something that has a very similar structure to the, sp the specification of SHA-1. And finally, we can use conditionals. This would also be inside the round update, where for the early rounds, the first 16, we read the message from memory. And for later rounds, we simply perform a sequence of instructions to do the message update. And what this does is it reduces this implementation from what would be 1,500 lines of unrolled assembly to just over 100 lines in AVO. And these are lines that you can see the structure in. And AVO is still quite young, but there's already a number of real examples that have been implemented with it. With the help of Damian Greisky, we already have a number of cryptographic primitives and hash functions. So I hope that if you find yourself writing Go assembly, you'll consider using AVO to do it more safely and easily. Thank you.